Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will give you a tour of the International Tennis Hall of Fame located in the city of Newport, Rhode Island. This former Newport Casino includes a museum, grass tennis courts, an indoor tennis facility and a court tennis facility. The Hall of Fame and Museum are located in the Newport Casino which was commissioned in 1879 by James Gordon Bennett Jr. as part of an exclusive resort for wealthy Newport summer residents. The United States Lawn Tennis Association held its first championships at the Newport Casino in 1881. Well, after a little bit of history, let's begin the tour. Museum entrance fee is $16 for adults. As you enter the museum, you will see a collection of displays dedicated to the legends of the game describing their achievements and heroics on the field. It was impossible for me to read through all the displays in the short time I had. However, I made sure that I read through the details of some of my favorite tennis players. The organization of the museum is in such a way so as to give a narrative of tennis history from its origins through present day. It is split into three areas, the birth of tennis, the popular game and the open era. The birth of tennis, which includes displays from 1874 to 1918, showcases how the sport evolved from court tennis, a game played in medieval monasteries. This section takes visitors through the rise in popularity of lawn tennis in the late 1800s and the development of international tournament tennis, including the early Olympic Games, the major tournaments and Davis Cup. The popular game which includes displays from 1918 to 1968 highlights how interest in the sport continued to soar throughout the 20th century and how tennis became more and more intertwined in popular culture outside of sports including in fashion, technology, media and decorative arts, all of which fueled its rise to becoming one of the world's most appealing and recognizable games.
the open era explores the period of time in which tennis has experienced the most significant growth and success that is 1968 to the present days this section of the museum examines the early developmental years of the ATP and WTA tours straight through their more iconic recent moments If you are like me and is a big Roger Federer fan, this is the best place to see up close his Wimbledon kit from the iconic 2009 final against Andy Roddick. It was an icing on the cake for me to see the outfit worn by another of my favorite player of all time Jan Borg in 1976. Next I will show you the best part of the museum experience which is the 3D hologram of Roger Federer. Take a look. I really like to talk about is the reason we're all here. We love tennis. Over the years the game has changed so much. Rackets, strings, apparel, speed, strength training. Tennis has evolved significantly since I started playing when I was just four years old, and I love it today as much as I ever have. I'm sure you do too. That's why you're here, right? And maybe you want to know why I love this sport so much. Okay then. Here are the 10 reasons that I love tennis. Reason number one: You get to hit the tennis ball. You get to hit it hard with pace and rhythm. You can be creative. It's such a great stress reliever. So even if you can't do this, this is a gem from the Chinese Roger Federer. Or this, it's a dream from that guy that fights the line. Or even this. The absolute brilliance of Roger Federer on the square again. At some point, you probably hit a perfect forehand, blast an ace down the tee, or punch the winning volley into the open court. That feeling when you hit that perfect shot is the reason we all play, right? No matter how many tournaments I win, I get a thrill every time that happens. Which brings me to reason number two: the zone. Sometimes when you're playing, even without realizing it, you find yourself in that zone. You're not thinking; you just flow from one shot to the next, reacting quickly and decisively. And you don't have to be number one in the world to experience it. Reason number three: tennis is such a beautiful sport. Tennis players have some of the greatest footwork in the world, and they move incredibly well on the court. While your arm swings the racket, the most important part is from your body or your kick. It sounds like a dance. I don't have the fastest serve in the game, or the most powerful ground strokes, unfortunately. But I hit the ball with the most topspin, and I'm far from the biggest guy on the tour. Good one. But I still manage to move very well. It's not just about getting to the ball. It's getting there early and with the proper balance to make the shot you want. Shot making leads me to reason number four. Tennis is unbelievably creative. One of the things I enjoy so much about competing against the greatest players in the world is the challenge to come up with the shots that get them off balance, just like they're trying to do to me, actually. The results are the kinds of shots that make the crowds go crazy. Wow. Talking about your game leads me to reason number five. I love tennis because it's so accessible to play. All you need to play is one other person, a racket, and some balls. Reason number six why I love tennis. It's truly an international sport. I've played ATP tournaments all over the world in my career. Reason number seven. It's a sport for all your life, everyone in it, including your family. I started dating my wife Mirka when competing at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Tennis has also brought me some great friendships, including my childhood buddies Mark Kidinelli, Michael Lammer, and Severin Luti, and my good friend and countryman Stan Wawrinka. In 2014, we all helped Switzerland win our first Davis Cup title ever. It was an amazing experience. You have to understand, Switzerland is a small country, just eight million people. So getting a chance to play on a team for your homeland with some of your best friends. And then to win it all, well, it's one of the best feelings I've ever had in the game. Reason number eight: 
It's all on you. Even though I've played team sports before, nothing teaches confidence like relying solely on yourself, physically and mentally. Reason number nine. It's a complete challenge of mind and body. I know I appear calm on the court, but as a young boy, I had a bit of a temper. Yeah, I've used uh, more than a few of these. Eventually I learned to channel my negative energy into a positive focus and confidence. I worked hard, very hard actually, and when I was a 17, I won the Wimbledon Junior Singles and Doubles titles. I turned pro later that year and started rising in the rankings. And at Wimbledon in 2001, I played one of my idols, Pete Sampras. Pete had won four straight Wimbledon titles and he'd never lost a five-set match in his career. I saved two great points late in the fifth set, I've actually been lucky, and then broke him at 6-5 to win the match. That match taught me about the thin line between winning and losing, That's the and how important confidence is. And not the tenth reason why I love tennis, it's fun. You run, you sweat, you experience the satisfying joy of playing this unique game. It's kind of crazy, and hitting a fuzzy yellow ball across the neck is so much fun. But we're all grateful that it is. I hope my thoughts will inspire you, Enjoy the rest of your museum experience and your time here in Newport, and don't forget to hit a few balls on the wonderful grass courts at the International Tennis Hall of Fame Museum. Good man. After hearing the great Roger Federer talk through the 3D hologram and learning few tips about the basics of tennis, I started exploring galleries related to the four major Grand Slam tournaments. Not surprisingly, most of the displays in these galleries were focused on champions of the open era, most importantly the big four of last 15 years, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray. It was also great to see few of the memorabilia dedicated to some of the greatest women's champions of all time. Personally, I was very happy and excited to see displays dedicated to two of the greatest men's doubles champions in the history of Grand Slam tennis, Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati, from India, my home country. Special mention was also given to some of the other great players from India such as Vijay Amritraj. If you are really interested in the history of tennis, you can spend hours admiring and exploring the different galleries in the museum. There are also many fun activities to do. Take a look at this You Call the Shot game. This is a game to test your commentary skills. He's tricked so Djokovic and he completely surprised him. Look, he completely was moving the wrong way but he still was able to get the ball back. I mean again, He's probably the only guy, maybe one or two others, could even put his racket on there. Shot's got a chance.
Oh, I think we can voice record. And tell which match. Single. Okay. Oh, this is for commentary. We can watch the match and record our own commentary. Oh. Not to Okat Nee. We can give better commentary for that, I think. Okay, Marat Safin going to serve. Oh, that's a very really good cross caught by Roger Federer. Oh, we to be. Again, the intimidation factor there from Federer as he takes that one right of his body and just sweeps it back for the clear win. <laughs> In this one, you can test your general knowledge about the game of tennis. Oh, you have to again do it. How come I not even get chance to defend myself? Okay, sir, question. Okay, I have to answer this. This Russian tennis star cost a lot of music to do with Latin folk sensation. It's a very good thing to do with it. I'm not going to go. Oh, man, I won. <laughs> Personality, social impact. What is the question? He's a good man. First of the open line against 68. Mm. Building, hopefully. Oh man. What is the answer? Hardcore change. So I think I would have answered it. Yes, I think you're right. Yes, sir. Technology. Okay. What animal does you build and employ to keep pigeons off the ground? Kutta over again. Oh, at least I'm willing to also. No animal, just the ball kicks. Oh no. Oh, Rufus the Hawk. Oh, there is a hawk in there. <laughs> you are a fan of Ram Althea Gibson. So, definitely lose. <laughs> After spending more than an hour inside the museum, now it was time to explore the different courts. In some courts, the players were casually practicing while in other courts, there were some serious competitive matches going on.
looking at these tennis courts reminded me of my younger days when I used to attempt to learn basic skills of tennis. Well, I never turned out to be a pro, but it increased my admiration of this great sport. We spent about 30 minutes walking around the courts. And that brings us to the end of this walking tour of this amazing place. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel, Live to Travel.